everyone and welcome to my channel Age of Deception. My name is uh, Jason. So I'm going to be talking a lot in the coming videos about rethinking hell, looking at the biblical support for conditional immortality. Uh, the traditional view of hell is that it is eternal conscious torment. I've struggled with this doctrine um, and I've basically since becoming a Christian just put it aside and focused on my trust in God and his righteousness and that justice will be served. But I could not put eternal conscious torment and, and I looked at the character of God and I was like, how can I fit this? I just could not. I was overjoyed finding out through the website Rethinking Hell and especially the work of Edward Fudge, God rest his soul, who's passed on to glory. I'm going to talk quite quickly because I, I want to um, get this under 10 minutes. It's easier to load. So we're going to look at 18 Bible verses about the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 14, Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. We see in Genesis that the penalty of sin is death. We look through uh, out the Old Testament, what will happen to the wicked? And it's always saying they will perish, they will be destroyed, they will be burned like chaff, like chaff. Uh, they will be ashes under the souls of the righteous. It all it always points to the eternal destruction of the wicked. It's important to see that then death and Hades itself will be thrown into the lake of fire. Hades is not hell. In fact, hell doesn't really exist. These uh, hell, the word hell arrived in the translations. Now, it's not that the translations are corrupt. Uh, we have access to the original Septuagint, the, the Greek, uh, the, the original Greek manuscripts, we, we know that the Jewish scriptures have not been corrupted. So, so theologians, uh, theologians could, can always return to the uh, main ones and look at the various translations and come to a more accurate portrayal of what's being said. Now, one great thing about the uh, dawn of the Internet, and it's funny that the, uh, the Bible says in the end times, the that knowledge will increase and i think that knowledge will increase uh, about uh, the bible don't forget that before internet you'd go to your local parish they didn't really teach certain things and there's always the fallacy you know the the we're not perfect and we can misinterpret things but i'm very excited that some of the church fathers uh, were supporters of nihilism or uh, conditional immortality and were not believers in eternal torment. They were a minority, they were a minority, but hopefully this view, which fits much better with the character of God, will begin to, to grow. And I think that it completely changes the perspective that we have on uh, the character of God. So death and Hades. Now Hades is not hell. Hades is the common grave. It's the Greek word for the underworld where everybody goes to. Now, there's a question of when you die and before, uh, you know, waiting for the resurrection of the dead and the judgment throne. Uh, we, we, some people believe that we, we sleep and we're, we're not conscious. And others think that there's an intermediate state, meaning uh, before judgment and... Uh, there is in within Hades a a good place where the uh, righteous go, and there's a bad place. So Hades basically is is the realm of the dead, and it is in a way also the um, holding the holding a, a cell in a way while we await judgment. Let's look at twenty ten Revelation and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are also. And they will be tor tormented day and night forever and ever. Now we have to realize, uh, we'll see in the following verses, that uh, the unsaved will also be thrown into this location. 
and the tormented day and night forever and ever. So we assume that if the devil and uh, the false prophet and the beast, these uh, spiritual beings who are immortal, angels are immortal, but humans are not mort uh, are not immortal. We need the tree of life that was in the garden to remain immortal. We have to feed off the tree of life. And that was in paradise in the Garden of Eden. In fact, that's why Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden because they were sinful. And if they would have also, uh, after disobeying God and, and taken the tree of knowledge of good and evil, if they would have taken the tree of life, they would have been in a sinful state forever. So God had to kick them out. But we see that in the uh, restored Eden, the last book in Revelation, we see again that we have access to the tree of life. So when they see tormented day and night, we're talking about the devil, spiritual beings that, yes, are immortal. And that mortal man will also be thrown into the lake of fire. But because we're not immortal, we will burn up and be destroyed, annihilated. We'll be turned to ashes. Revelation 21, 8. But for the cowardly and the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers and the immoral persons, the sorcerers and the adulterers and all liars, their part will be in the lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone. However, notice it says this is the second death. Revelation 20, 15. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. And the beast was seen with him, the false prophet, who performed signs in the presence by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, which, which, burns, with, which burns with brimstone. Matthew 18, 8. If your hand and your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. It is better that you enter life crippled or lame than to have two hands and two feet and be cast into the eternal fire. Now, obviously, he's not saying chop your hand, your, your feet. He's just saying like how, you know, the, this mortal body, it, you know, it's better, it's better to lose everything here, but at least make it into uh, eternal life and not be thrown in, and destroyed and to perish. Uh, in Mark, it says, if your eyes cause you to stumble, throw it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Now, here they notice that, look, you'll be thrown in and the worm will, will not die and the fire will be, not be quenched. Now, this is actually a passage that we can look at in another video that Jesus is quoting, actually, Isaiah and the worm that doesn't die in the fire that's not quenched is actually in Gehenna. And Gehenna is actually a garbage pit that at the time of Jerusalem, uh, back, you know, in Jesus' time. So he's using that as a metaphor. In Isaiah, it says that the righteous will look after judgment upon the corpses of the wicked and the worms will not die. So Jesus doesn't always quote the whole passage, just like when he was quoting Isaiah on the cross. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is, is a quote from Isaiah that you have to go read. He's just like saying, hey, go look at that passage. Matthew 25, 46, these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Notice again that it is not, they will not go away into eternal punishing. They'll go into an eternal punishment. Capital punishment, when you're hanged, lethal injection, that is an eternal punishment. It's not going to be revoked. You're forever removed from the land of the living. Dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will pay the penalty of eternal destruction. I mean, look it up in the dictionary what destruction means. It's not eternal conscious torment. And this destruction, because they will perish and be annihilated, they will be away from the presence of the Lord and from his glory and his power. Because in Christian religion, eternal life is only through Christ Jesus. And, uh, uh, and will be thrown into the furnace of fire. In there, 
place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yes, for sure. If you realize that you're missing out on eternal life, you'll cry. When you're shown how shameful you are and all, every single thought and deed in your life that is wicked is revealed during judgment, then you will be weeping. And if you look at gnashing of the teeth, the Bible interprets itself. Therefore, gnashing of teeth, teeth if you look at it, that's actually um, represented by anger, not clenching your teeth in torment. They're going to be crying and they're going to be mad about losing out eternal life. Um, like, haven't you seen a lot of people that are crying and upset and then end up punching the wall because they're mad? Sadness and madness, when you're disappointed, when you're, you, you know, that they go together. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. So death is annihilated, just like uh, it was promised. It says that, you know, Jesus conquered death itself. And because of that, he has conquered it for us. And Hades, which is the underworld where the dead are, well, during the resurrection, you are either given a new spiritual body for eternal life, or you're resurrected and you're thrown into the fire. Hades is a holding place until judgment. This is the second death, the lake of fire. Again, this is plain English, guys. It's death. Death is you cease to exist. You're gone. You perish. You're destroyed. You're annihilated. And if anyone's name was not found written into the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to pits of darkness reserved for judgment. So the fallen angels in Genesis, they are in a holding cell, a prison until judgment. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can endure the burning of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire and the rocks are broken up by him. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire and a jealous God. People always criticize, oh, he's jealous. No, it's, if you look at jealous, it could be zealous. It means that he's created us to worship him and he does not like us to go off and worship our own, our, you know, our own idols. Circumcise yourself to the Lord, meaning res remove your fleshly desires uh, from the Lord and remove the foreskin of your heart. Foreskin in uh, the Old Testament is um, when they circumcised the, their foreskin, it was a represent uh, representation of removing the, fle the fleshly desires from your heart. Men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, or else my wrath will go forth like fire and burn with none to quench it. This means that this fire will accomplish what it is is doing, and that is to completely burn and, and destroy and annihilate the wicked because of the evil of, the, of your deeds, Malachi. But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller, fuller's soap. Now, we are sinful. Christians are sinful. Christians acknowledge their sin and, and they acknowledge their, their hopeless state. And therefore, they, it often says in the gospel, they put on Christ, died for, our, we died for our sins. And during the resurrection, we will be like him. So we notice that God is a consuming fire. And without being uh, covered by Christ, we will, we will burn. And we see that uh, foreshadowing of that when Nebuchadnezzar heats up the oven and uh, throws Daniel and his uh, two uh, followers into the furnace, they see a third man, one like the son of man, and they are not burning in the fire. That is a theophany or Christophany. This is Christ appearing uh, as the visible Yahweh in the Old Testament. We can really actually, when I'm done this, we're going to look at the 
Jewish Trinity and Jesus in the Old Testament, an amazing study which greatly helped me understand the Trinity. Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. In Hades, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. This is a parable of the rich man that dies, and there's also a poor man that, that was uh, scarred with diseases uh, that are, are in the intermediate state, the land of the dead. And the rich man who uh, was selfish during his lifetime, he's stuck in the bad part of that uh, holding cell. And Lazarus is being soothed in the good part. But notice uh, if you look at this parable further, the Lazarus says, please let me go back and tell my brothers to change their ways so that they don't suffer from, uh, from like, like me. Uh, so the, the, this is a dead man talking about people still living. So this is not the eternal judgment. So this here, I hope, uh, starts making you question about uh, what is being taught in mainstream Christianity about eternal conscious torment.